Hello. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. This week, we begin to prayerfully reflect on the blessings God has given us and how we, in turn, can be good stewards of those gifts, sharing our finances with this community that has welcomed us and made us feel at home. Let me share some examples of how your giving has helped us grow passionate disciples here at St. Francis de Sales. I have four. Catese uh, Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. Diana Hagens, a parishioner, shared a beautiful moment with our second grade students participating in Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. It's a program which is part of our Catholic school. These children processed into the classroom, each carrying a sacred item, a cross, a Bible, a candle, preparing to mark the Bible as the most important book. Through this program, our youngest parishioners learn about the Mass, about prayer, and experience God's love. This is how they come to know and feel the sacredness of worship in a hands-on, personal way, shaping them into future leaders of our faith community, even though they're only in second grade. Your weekly donations make this possible, subsidizing the cost of supplies, materials, the catechist training, retreats, and even snacks. Never discount the spiritual powerful uh, power of breaking bread, even if the bread is in the form of Rice Krispie treats. Supporting our children as they grow in Christ is an investment in the future of our church. Who wouldn't want that for our children? The second one, youth ministry. Another powerful story comes from our youth ministry. A teen youth leader shared how a student approached her outside of structured group time, asking to learn how to pray. The youth leader shared her own prayer routine and prayed with the student who had been going through a difficult time. This relationship built on trust and compassion reflects the powerful, lasting connections formed through our youth ministry. These programs are more than just lessons. They are opportunities for teens to navigate life's challenges with faith, supported by their peers and caring leaders. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. To truly welcome someone is to form a meaningful, genuine relationship with them. In today's world filled with judgment and negativity, it is a blessing that our parish offers a safe place for our youth to turn it. The third one, Hope College Mission Trip. Another parishioner, David Scotto, and his wife supported a Hope College student's mission trip to Costa Rica through the St. Benedict Institute, which partners with our parish. That's the one Deacon Brian was talking about earlier. The student returned with stories of spreading the gospel and serving local communities in Costa Rica. Through their generosity, our parish extends far beyond Holland, bringing Christ's message of love and service to people we may never meet. We are not just reaching our community. We are answering the call to serve the world. The fourth example is not on this piece of paper, and in a couple of minutes it'll be obvious because I'll be stuttering and I won't know what I'm saying. Um, but the fourth one is a little closer to home. Um, this weekend I had the opportunity to participate in a retreat with uh, over 70 students that are preparing for confirmation. And we met at the, uh, the school, Corpus Christi School, that all of you have supported, and I thank you for that. Um, one of the things we did during that was Eucharistic adoration. And leading up to this, you could almost cut the tension with a knife in the room because some of the kids weren't sure what was going to happen. Um, and so we, we proceeded to go in and over an hour we had adoration. And I want to share this with you that afterwards we kind of asked the students, what was that like? What did you, what did you 
experience. In my group, believe it or not, the thing that they said was, that was really short. That just went by like, like that. And um, I want to thank you because you provided that opportunity for these students to experience this, off, uh, for a lot of them, for the very first time. Um, and sometimes we hear these stories and we, we think about the cathedrals and the hospital systems and, and when uh, the church asks you to do donate your finances, your hard-earned finances, it's kind of easy to think, well, someone else is going to do that because that's for the world. But I kind of want to make it more you know, real for you. Um, I want to thank you personally, but I don't only want to thank you. I want, if you guys can help me out, if you were at the retreat, and I know a lot of you were he there, be it a leader, a student leader, or even a participant, will you please stand right now? Thank you. So these are the people that you benefited just this weekend. Um, so thank you very much. A little bit more. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. This week, I invite you to reflect on these stories and how each of us can respond to God's generosity. How will you answer the call to serve and support the least of these? Through your financial pledge, you are welcoming the stranger, nurturing disciples, and sharing Christ's love with our parish, our community, and beyond. To make your pledge, please use the card that was mailed to you last week. Yes, you'll have to check your mailbox. If you did not receive one, you can pick up a pledge card in the gathering space after Mass. We ask that you prayerfully consider your commitment and bring your pledge card back next weekend. Pledges can also be made online by visiting our parish website. Thank you for your generosity and for being part of our mission to grow passionate disciples of Jesus Christ.